this whole video was put together based on conversations I had with my friend Blair, and he's written an article from his perspective on this, and I've linked that in the description, and I, and I urge you to check that out. With the release of the Panasonic S1 and S1R, the conversation around how much a camera should cost has been pretty prevalent. Most of it is around that a camera costs too much, like the Panasonic S1 and S1R are too expensive. But I'd like to flip that on its head. What if I argued that cameras in general aren't expensive enough? Bear with me, I'm going to start in a direction you probably aren't expecting, but I promise there's a payoff. This is the Zeitwerk Minute Repeater by Long & Sohn. It's a very unique timepiece created by master craftsmen for the purpose of showing what they at Long & Sohn can do. In addition to showing you the time on the face, which is expected of any watch, this one also can tell you the time by ear, but in a way that's not quite as silly as it sounds. L listen. If you're into watches, you probably recognize that this is something special. Even if watches aren't your thing, you kind of have to admit that this looks pretty. This is a pretty looking watch. It's not meant to be owned by very many people, as the price point would suggest, and the fact that they don't make very many of them. This watch, even for watch collectors, is well out of the range of most of them. Even of the highest end watch collectors, this one is probably not going to make it into their collection. But that's okay, because if this watch strikes your fancy, if you really like the way that this watch looks, there are options available to you. In February of 2019, Long and Sohn released the Zeitwerk Date. The Zeitwerk Date shares many of the visual features of the Zeitwerk Minute Repeater, but with a few changes and the fact that it doesn't do the auditory rings that the Zeitwerk Minute Repeater does, but it has a lot of the internal workings and it's made by the same people. But it's definitely not the same watch. The Minute Repeater was not meant to be a watch for everyone. The Minute Repeater was meant to be a watch to show you what was possible. The watch for everyone is something like the Zeitwerk Date. Wh why am I talking about high-end watches at all? Bear with me. Let's do something slightly closer related to the camera industry. What you're looking at here is called The Wall. This is Samsung's pinnacle of television technology. In 2018 and 2019, Samsung featured this micro-LED technology in their booth at CES. This micro-LED technology has all of the benefits of OLED technology, such as truly black blacks, great contrast, high dynamic range, and HLG, but without the downsides of OLED, the organic part. See, OLED can actually wear down over time and isn't as long-lasting as traditional LED. In this way, Samsung is able to create a television where they have all of the benefits and none of the downsides. Samsung and many critics say that this technology should give the best-in-class brightness and best-in-class picture quality that you get out of OLED, but in the package that makes far more sense in the long term. What's kind of neat about these and what Samsung shows is that these panels can ship in any size they really want and can be formed together to create complete pictures with no seam. So the thought is this actually can help you expand your television over time. If you want to get a bigger one, you don't have to buy a brand new television, you can just buy a panel. Additionally, it would ship better. Right now, televisions are very fragile, and when you ship them, they are in gigantic boxes. These panels can be made so the boxes can be a little bit easier to, to maneuver, and once they're on your wall, you can't even tell their individual parts. So the wall is a 219-inch television of unparalleled quality, and will probably cost over $100,000 when it ever does come out. The technology is still a couple years away from being able to be mass-produced. $100,000 for a television is considerably more than any of us would ever want to spend on a TV. I myself have a 65-inch 4K Sony television that was $2,000, and there's absolutely no way I would ever spend anything more than that. In fact, that seemed kind of pricey to me. So now, I'll try and loop this back. What does this have to do with cameras? In 2008, for example, you could purchase a high-end DSLR, like the Nikon D3X, for $8,000. With some inflation calculated in, in today's pricing, that's $9,330 for a body only. In 2008, that was 
pretty normal for the highest end digital camera. You would spend between six and $10,000. Can you imagine the outcry if any camera company decided to sell their top of the line full frame camera for $9,000? Outside of medium format cameras, which they themselves are struggling to show value in today's market, any company asking $9,000 for a high-end digital camera would be absolutely crucified in today's market. It's an unthinkable amount to ask, especially now when you think that most companies are willing to sell you a full-frame high-end digital camera for $2,000. And you can argue that it's because the market has shifted, that things have become easier to make, and that the price points of everything have fallen considerably in 10 years, and that's true. But I think there's more to it than that. Something has happened over the last 10 years that has really forced the value of even photographic equipment down. Maybe it's a combination of companies undercutting each other. Maybe it's the entire industry of photography being commoditized in a way that no one really could have seen a while ago. Maybe it's because of the iPhone or cell phones, but something has really forced everyone to lower all of their pricing and expectations way, way down. And I don't think that that's for the benefit of all. Let's look back at the Zeitwerk Minute Repeater and the wall. In both these examples, the companies that make these products know that a vast majority of their consumer base is never going to purchase them. Especially in the case of the Zeitwerk Minute Repeater, the, that watch is just the most that they could make and they're not gonna make very many of them. They make every single one of those by hand. In the case of the wall, there's no way they're gonna move very many $100,000 televisions. So why do they make them at all? What's the point of this? Well, you already know the answer to that. These things are designed to show what a company can produce. They're designed to show what's the best that someone can make. And I think that that sets the right tone for what any company should do. In something like a luxury watch, that's a completely separate market than consumer digital technology. But in both cases, you want to show your customers what you're capable of and why they should trust you over time and continually purchase their product. For Long & Sewn, that's because they need to show that they can stand up with everyone else. There are so many luxury watchmakers and the, really the only thing separating each of them is what they can do special apart from each other. In the end, a watch is a watch, it's a timepiece. So they need to send some message as to why their timepiece is better or unique or special. In televisions, which are notoriously challenging to sell and make any money at, the only way for them to stand out is to show you that they have not just picture quality, but some sort of innovation in mind for the future. The wall is a perfect example of that. You may not be a Samsung buyer now, but after you see what they can do with their tech and the idea of what it creates for their product, you may start looking at Samsung products today, even though the wall isn't gonna be even be available for three or four more years. And when it is, it's likely outside of your price point. I think another really good example is the concept car. Lamborghini makes these concept cars regularly. Let's take a look at one in particular called the Egoista. This car will never be sold, but they made it to show what they could do. And they based it on the Lamborghini Gallardo, which is a purchasable car. So even if the Egoista went on the market, it would cost well over $2 million. The Gallardo is $200,000. You see these numbers and you think these are all crazy numbers, but just you know, take a few zeros off and you can see the percentage differences here. You, the people who buy the Gallardo want to have the heritage of a company that makes something like the Egoista. That's what they're selling. That's the plan. What is the best they can possibly make? And then they make it, and then you can buy something further down the line that has parts of that car in it and makes you feel like you've got the same heritage that the main car that they made does. But what I want to ask you is what you th would think if Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, or Sony created a camera that would sell for something like nine, ten, or eleven thousand dollars, but wouldn't necessarily be sold to us. It would just be something that was available to those who really wanted to purchase it. What would you expect them to put in those cameras? And I would say right now, I don't even know what I would expect out of those because right now I'm so limited by the vision of what they've made in the last five to six years. The technology that we've seen is only what they've been able to package in a camera they know they can move. Now, a lot of people will argue that it's just gear. You don't need it. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. Like you can still use a film camera and that's completely true. But what's happened as we've moved forward with technology in cameras is a lot like what happens with all other consumer electronics. They decide to go with what can they push the limits on? Do you necessarily need 
the type of picture quality you get out of the micro LED wall that Samsung makes. No, but is it nice? Yeah. So what could be put into a camera that would be nice or special that we're not getting now? That what if these engineers that work for Sony, Nikon, Canon, Panasonic, Olympus, what if they were told, ignore what this costs, ignore all of that, just make me something truly amazing. What would they make? I want to know what they would make. I think that would be a really good way to, for all of these companies to really challenge each other. Rather than f forcing each other to work within these constraints of what it needs to finally cost to move the product, which they definitely can do further down the line, what if they just decided to make something truly amazing? I argue that creating something amazing that maybe is unreachable for 99% of the consumer base actually helps sell not only the brand, but the rest of the cameras in the line. And the reason I believe this, especially with cameras, is it still pertains to the cinema industry. You can buy a $5,000 cinema camera, but you can also buy a $75,000 cinema camera. Both of those objects are going to capture video and likely at the same or similar frame rates. But the difference is going to be vast in other areas of filmmaking that someone who buys a $5,000 camera may not need that someone a $75,000 cinema camera purchaser will. You see what I'm trying to say? In this time where camera releases get so hyped and everyone loves getting excited about them, I feel like introducing something super high-end every couple years that shows where the camera company's vision is going for the future would be amazing. We get the pieces of that technology as they trickle down into other bodies, but we hold each company to a standard that they set for themselves when they release the super high-end cameras. Somewhere along the line, camera manufacturers in this industry decided that every camera they make, from their entry-level still camera to their high-end still camera, needed to exist in this small price range, somewhere between $1,000 and $5,000. And in doing that, they've limited what they can put into each of those cameras. When you look at every high-end camera on the market today, they tick most of the boxes, but they never tick all of the boxes. There's always something missing. And I just was wondering, what if these companies made a camera where they didn't have to sacrifice anything? Where they made a camera that did everything? Maybe I just want to see someone tick every box and final price be damned. Thanks for watching another episode of Broader Focus, everyone. This is a style of video that is different from my reviews. I don't know to call them editorials or opinions, but they aren't reviews. They're more like my musings on what's going on in the industry overall and certain aspects of it. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I really want to hear your opinions on the matter because honestly, I don't think camera companies, at least in the stills area, are challenging themselves enough, and it's probably our fault. I think we should be more willing to let these guys do something special rather than complain when we can't afford what they're making. That's just my take on it. I'm happy to have a conversation with you all about it. Make sure you hit me up on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe and more videos are coming soon. All right, later.